To celebrate the 20th anniversary of Kalu, Roger Thorpe and Pramod Sharma spoke about building trust with social media. Roger is the president of Thorpe Benefits. Pramod, that's me, is the marketing actuary at Taxevity. This studio recording covers my portion of the presentation. Think back to grade 12. What did you want to do with your life? A computer said I was most like Bruce Springsteen. No, most like a social worker. Me? I was shy and I had no social skills, yet I had ideals. Like Bruce, I believed in a better world. How could I help? At Western, I decided to devote my life to insurance. To hide from the public I promised to serve, I became an actuary. No social skills required. I built my career helping advisors succeed. Here's how. I first used my actuarial training to design products in the golden years of innovation. Do you remember the mid-1990s? That's when consumer accountability improved. NN Challenger changed the marketplace by bringing better value and more guarantees. The primary product, Universal Life, was both flexible and accountable. At National Life, our plan was called Flex Account. Fellow Kalu members James Deacon and Ron Sanderson were part of the team. I worked on all 18 versions, starting with the first in 1994. In those days, insurance illustrations communicated poorly. As products became generic, the way they are now, I moved to the next phase, presentation tools. Windows 95 changed insurance. We moved from text to visuals from black and white to color. Computers became faster and portable, and all prices dropped dramatically. Illustrations moved from DOS to Windows. At National Life, Herb Huck led this important transition. When a paradigm shifts, everyone switches back to zero. Hello, Internet. In 1999, a company called Google moved out of a garage into an office, all six employees. Also that year, the BlackBerry was introduced. Who would want one? Now, who can live without a smartphone? Privacy took precedence. Do not knock. Do not phone. Do not email. Spam became a bad word. Consumers wanted to initiate contact. They started shouting back, and their voices were credible. Who was helping advisors thrive in these electric times? I thought you needed personally branded websites. In 2000, I secretly created a prototype. Within months, the board approved the multi-year, multi-million dollar save tax project. These sites were branded for you and maintained by National Life. You now had a destination on the web. Consumer-friendly content was crucial. I hired Steve Carlson of Marketing Options to work with one of my actuaries, Bill McMillan. The next step was to drive traffic to your site with weekly emails. The email had your branding and links to your website, and an option to unsubscribe. When Enveronics asked, 3,605 advisors were happy, and they rated National Life number one overall, and number one in eight categories, unprecedented. Here's the bad news, and you probably suffer the same way, the fan effect. Strangers gave National Life the third lowest score out of 17 companies. Fans gave the highest rating. This was the biggest gap for any company. Would strangers love you, if they got to know you? In the early years, Coca-Cola had a similar problem. To turn strangers into fans, they used the first ever coupon. This was to offer a free sample. How can prospects sample what you offer on their terms? I wanted to advertise the findings, but National Life disappeared. Next phase, please. Now I started advising advisors. I supported national accounts and MGAs, mainly in Ontario. I quickly discovered that advisors face two key challenges. Credibility first. As an actuary, this was easy to provide. Who wants to know how the MTAR is calculated from a one-and-a-half-year FPT reserve? 
No one? No one? Well, we'll continue with this presentation. Marketing was the bigger threat. I focused on finding modern techniques that you could use. I was touring solo far from E Street. No roadies, no budget. What could we do? Well, safe tax websites created a destination and email created traffic. Why not replace both with what's now called social media? Would this work? I used myself as the prototype and saw you get a precious free prize inside. Trust. Kayla has helped us prepare for this new age of advice. The most valuable insight I ever got here came from Robert Cialdini. He suggested we influence with information. That's exactly what social media does. Craig Poston said we needed to brand ourselves. Cows in a field look the same, but the purple cow stands out. That's a reference to a book by Seth Godin. The internet lets you brand yourself for free. Mitch Joel said we must stay visible online, burn the ships like Cortez, and move forward. My personal website keeps my brand visible and helps build trust. Trust has two components. First, there's expertise. This is easy to gauge through your designations and experience, but prospects feel they have reasonable substitutes. Look around this room. Do you remember what Jim Burton's mom said? Your actions speak so loud I can't hear a word you say. The other element is action. The other element is intent. This makes the difference. You prove your intent by what you do that others continue to see you do. Let's first examine your expertise. Seth Godin said, Average people are in the majority, but they're not in demand. By definition, most of us are close to average, even in this room. That doesn't compel prospects to pick you. You want to be the best in the world. You pick your world, your niche. Prospects judge who's best for them. When you start using social media, there's a small learning curve. You quickly become better, you keep working at it, and the results drop. With social media, you're climbing a hill. You have to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Because if you quit, you're going to slide down and get stuck in the dip. And everyone will know that you quit. You must keep pushing for the real results. There's an ideal place to show your expertise. LinkedIn. We're judged by the company we keep. Who associates with you in public? Written testimonials show your expertise, if they're credible. Who vouches for you in public? You also get analytics to show how your marketing is working. Over 90 days, I showed up in 1,141 searches, and from those, 261 people visited my profile. That's almost 23%. I would have shown more decimal places, but the screen was only so wide. The 23% is up from 11% the year before. Over three days, the rate is about one in three. People are looking for someone like you right now. Are you visible? You can see your networking success too. I first connected to advisors since I was committed to your success. Now we're competitors or collaborators. Last January, I added another segment. Results will take another year or two. Last summer, an experiment got me within one segment within weeks. And this is my current focus. Others agree to connect to you when they see your intent. You build your reputation on what you've done and continue to do. You can't fake intent for long. Your ongoing actions give you away. Keeping the flame lit takes effort and care. It's easy to crash, but tough to soar. There's one perfect fuel. Information. Information that's timely and relevant. This gives you influence, personal branding, and ongoing visibility. What's the best medium for your message? Well, if you like to talk, record your voice, and now you have a podcast. If you like to show, record video and post it on YouTube. If you like writing, then blog. Do you remember when Jim Burton showed us the impact of three cups of tea? The first is between strangers. 
the second between friends, and the third among family. Imagine what 401 cups would do. Here's how I use social media. I thought blogging would help advisors succeed. Steve Carlson taught me to write and edit during the save tax years. That gave me the confidence to start two blogs. Marketing Actuary helps you market better, and Riscario helps you educate your clients. I still write them. This word cloud shows my focus. Blogging creates a destination that Google can easily find. Your content shows your expertise, intent to help, and personality. When the Globe and Mail wrote about the insurance loophole, what did you say on the record? Does blogging work? Last year, four of my ten most popular posts were recommended reading by the Globe and Mail. In 2007, on a panel with John McKay, Ross Morton used a very powerful quote from Warren Buffett. At bottom, any insurance policy is simply a promise, and as everyone knows, promises vary enormously in their quality. I turned that into a blog post. What happens when you search for Warren Buffett life insurance? I show up before Warren Buffett. This post is read often. 25 times today, and 222 times this month. That's pretty good for something written in 2007. Welcome to Riscario Radio. I'm your host, Pramod Sharma, Actuary to the Wealthy. This is a special edition exclusively for Kalu 2011. What's going on? I, I hear him, but his lips aren't moving. Good writing pleases the ear. Before publishing a blog post, I would read it out loud. Wait, why not record and publish that? Now I have a podcast. Thanks for listening. I couldn't understand Twitter. What can you say in 140 characters? As I told the Toronto Star last month, I then saw that Twitter was a way to drive traffic. Powerful and free. We're judged by the company we keep. Here are some of my Twitter followers. Do you recognize any? They pay me with attention. Your audience chooses you. They can leave any time for any reason. They can say whatever they want about you too, and that creates your reputation. Anyone can look at your reputation online. There are services like Clout. My score is 26 out of 100. That's pathetic, but improving. If you're not visible, you're a zero. Which is worse? Your inaction speaks so loud, I can't hear a word you're saying. Recall the weekly National Life emails. Why waste the tweets? I put five in a monthly newsletter that's read mainly in my target market of Ontario. We're in a new age of advice. For years, I advised advisors to harness the power of social media. I decided to follow my own advice. I decided to apply everything I learned to serve the public directly. I want to be your friend. I want to guard your dreams and vision. I never imagined that I'd sell life insurance, but I do. The computer in grade 12 was right. Now, I am a social worker, though I'd still rather be Bruce. My business could not exist without social media. Does it work? Here's what happened a month ago. Monday, Toronto Star website. Wednesday, the Toronto Board of Trade newsletter. Friday, the Metro commuter paper and website. Friday, the Toronto Star print edition. All free, all due to social media. How would you turn that attention into revenue? In summary, when someone searches for you, show up. That's the end. Do consider social media in your business. You may find some tremendous opportunities. Thanks for watching.